good afternoon everyone myself dr anshal uh, welcome you all in our validatory session of the validatory session of the our ongoing validated program on ancient indian history uh, as we all know <coughs> in the 30 days we uh, try to cover the important area of the ancient indian history uh, and it is also uh, we believe that the it will be or or it was helpful for the our student participant faculty members so in the uh, in our valedictory session we have invited uh, dr jersna from central university uh, uh, gujarat completed his phd uh, she completed her phd uh, from central university of gujarat and she also qualified egc net examination and charge yara she also and his mphil and phd from the central university of gujarat and apart from this she also published almost or the near about 10 research papers in uh, various journals uh, including national and international journal so now dr jetsna is going to enlighten us of the important area uh, of the ancient indian history and deliver his lecture now over to you ma'am thank you so much for warm welcome and in my introduction i am audible sir yes yes you are okay sir so my ppt is visible no ma'am yes now you you can share your ppt okay good afternoon to everyone please let me introduce myself i teach uh, history at sabarmati university and i work as a visiting faculty at nirma university so in today i will teach, uh, cover the topic ancient indian history and uh, overview so in this <coughs> topic i am discuss the uh, from the stone age to the later gupta period so let me discuss one by one in briefly so first is the sources and approaches of the ancient indian history so when we talk about the ancient indian history there are <clears throat> some uh, availability and decipherment or the two limitation regard limitation regarding the sources of ancient indian history because of the we have lack of sources in the ancient indian history so in colonial period britishers were the source uh, about the entrance in in ancient literature indian text uh, culture and civilization for this regarding sir william jones in 1784 founded asiatic society of bengal for the learning understanding and publishing sources of the ancient indian history because of the <coughs> britishers was the Uh, understand the in, uh, in, in in the complexity of the ancient society so they were more interested the translated indian text uh, especially literature especially the methodological text so after the 1861 formation of archaeological survey of india this is the also uh, kind of uh, legal momentum of the ancient indian history regarding the so sources of ancient indian history so there are two type of sources in ancient indian history first is literary that is also called the written sources and second is material and archaeological sources so this <clears throat> this graph is completely uh, depict the picture of the ancient indian sources so uh, there are two type of sources so let me cover one by one first is religious sources the religious sources also divide in two three category so first is vedic and that is also called hindu literature in which 
फोर वेदास ब्राह्मण आरिने उपनिषद षड दर्शन सडांग सूत्रास स्मृति एंड पुराण दीज आर द वैदिक सोर्सेस वैदिक लिटरेचर एंड अनदर कैटेगरी इज द बुद्धिस्ट लिटरेचर बेसिकली बुद्धिस्ट लिटरेचर नोन वॉज द त्रिपिटक सो त्रिपिटक इज ऑल्सो डिवाइड इन थ्री कैटेगरी सुत्र पिटक विनय पिटक एंड अभिधम अभिधम पिटक एंड अनदर बुद्धिस्ट टेक्स्ट इज द मिलिंद पन्हो दैट इज दिस इज ऑल्सो द बुद्धिस्ट लिटरेचर टेक्स्ट एंड नेक्स्ट इज दिव्या वदान सो दीज आर द बुद्धिस्ट लिटरेचर इन दिस इन दिस वी नोन ऑफ द एंशियंट हिंसी फ्रॉम द पीरियड ऑफ द बुद्धिज्म एंड जैनिज्म another category was the jain literature in which ang and agam was the important source of jain literature and uh, many biographies of the uh, jain monk as the important source one of the important source of the jain literature is uh, bhadrabahu charit and parishist parvandi this is the important source of the jain literature so these are the uh, overview of the uh, religious sources of the ancient indian history so next category is secular uh, sources in this <coughs> there are some uh, books like raj tarangri vikram dev charit godavo harsh charit kumar pal charit mudra rakshat malvika agni mitram nagdat ratnavali priyadarshika these are the some secular uh, literature secular text so uh, next category of the sources in scientific text so in this basically scientific and we can uh, call the historical uh, text so in which arthashastra that is also written by the kautilya asthadai this is also written by the panini mahabhas charak sanhita sushrut sanhita these are the sub scientific text and based on the science and technology apart from the uh, indian text there are some foreign accounts that is also important uh, source of the ancient indian history so we can uh, divide into two category the greek uh, the first greek and roman second chinese so in greek and roman herodotus was the important scholar and megasthenes uh, next is pericles of the eritrean sea The, this is the book name and author of the book name uh, author of the book in this book was the unknown so chinese in the chinese accounts uh, in which for uh, fayan and hunsang was the important uh, account of the important to ancient indian history basically fayan was the uh, came in india in uh, 337 uh, ad um, in the Uh, gupta period and hansang was the came in harshvardhan period of the history so uh, these are the literary sources of the ancient indian history so next category is the archaeological sources of the so in which we can also divide in three four category like inscription coins ancient monuments painting archaeological remains inscription again we can divide in epigraph copper plates coin buddhist stoop chat vihar temple painting these are the some archaeological sources uh, in which there are many uh, other category so we can uh, uh, discuss about one by one so this is the brief introduction about the sources of ancient indian history so uh, let the let me come to the next theme uh, ancient indian history so that is the stone age <clears throat> this is also the age of the human evolution so in this age also divide into three category paleolithic age mesolithic age and neolithic age so paleolithic age is the time period uh, was that 2.5 million uh, years ago and mesolithic as time was the 15000 years ago and neolithic is time period was the 11000 years ago so again uh, we can again uh, paleolithic was uh, is is divided into three category so uh, 
basically the stone age uh, was the period of the uh, hunting and gathering age and robert bruce is the archaeologist who discovered the first paleolithic tools in india that uh, the pallavaram hand axe the indian stone is cl uh, classified family into three types paleolithic age mesolithic age and neolithic age and paleolithic age again divided into three category based on the stone tools used by the people and the according to the nature of the change of climate because these are the uh, two important uh, category of the uh, ancient india firstly the climate change and second is the uh, to, to what kind of tools used ancient people so first is lower paleolithic age middle paleolithic age and upper paleolithic age so because ancient uh, paleolithic time period was the uh, very vast so for the better understanding uh, historian divide into three category uh, paleolithic age so lower paleolithic it covered the greater part of the ice age and uh, basically hunting and food gathering was the main concept of the this age so tools were used hand axe chopper cleaver basically in this time tools was very rough and heavy so one of the important lower paleolithic site is bori that is located in maharashtra and major other site was the paleolithic was sohan valley in present time pakistan and belan valley is up these are the important uh, paleolithic site <coughs> and other important uh, paleolithic site is kashmir mewad soras gujarat deccan plateau chhota nagpur plateau these um, are the some other important uh, paleolithic site and bhim betka was the place in located in madhya pradesh this is also important site of the paleolithic age and its cave this is a rock shelter and cave so Bhim Betka was the another important site of the this age. So uh, next middle uh, middle Paleolithic age. In this age, basically tools was the uh, comparatively uh, comparatively uh, sharp and pointer. Basically in this age, tools uh, were used flat blade and uh, pointer. The tools were is smaller, lighter, and thinner. there was a decrease in use of the hand axe with the respect of other tools an important middle paleolithic age site is belan valley luni valley son and narmada river these are the important middle paleolithic sites upper paleolithic age was the last phase of the ice age when the climate became comparatively warmer and less humid In, in this age emergence of human sapiens the period is marked by innovation in tools and technology basically this age was the advanced age in the previous age so these are uh, these this is the uh, overview about the uh, paleolithic age and let me come to the mesolithic age this is in in this era people live in uh, semi permanent settlement along with the occupying cave and open ground the people of this era believe in life after death and therefore they <clears throat> uh, dead with the food item and other goods bogar in rajasthan in is one of the biggest and uh, site of the mesolithic site in india neolithic period this is also called new stone age the term neolithic is derived from the greek word neo which is which means new and lithic means meaning stone thus the term neolithic was re refer to the new stone age it is also term a neolithic revolution since it introduced a lots of important changes in man social and economic life the neolithic age saw man turning into a food producer from food food gatherer so in which three main characteristic first is tools and weapon in which tools are 
very uh, advanced compared to Mesolithic and Neolithic period, agriculture and housing and settled life. Uh, these three important characteristics of the Neolithic period. So, major site of this period uh, is the Koldiva and Mahagara. Mehargarh, that is Baluch, Bal, located in Baluchistan, uh, Pakistan, Burdhom, Guffar, Chirand, and some uh, South Indian sites like Pilakkar, Brahmagiri, Maski, Halur, Dijada. Uh, located in Karnataka and Velan Valley also important site is Neolithic period. So this is the about the uh, Stone Age in in which we have covered uh, three period of the Stone Age: Paleolithic Age, Mesolithic Age, and Neolithic Age. So next uh, phase of the ancient Indian history, the, this is the in uh, Indus Valley civilization. So basically, Indus Valley civilization existed through its early year of the 3300 and 1300 BC. It is and mature period of this uh, site was the 2600 2, between 900 BC. The area of this civilization extended along the Indus River from today is northeast Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, and northwest India. Basically, in the early civilization was the most widespread of three early civilization of ancient world, along with the Egypt, uh, ancient Egypt and Mesopotam Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia and Egypt civilization was the con contemporary civilization of the in the early civilization. So, mature period of this civilization, which is a very debatable issue, Indian historian. And scholars. Uh, so, <laughs> some scholars say that 2600 BC was the mature period of the Indus Valley civilization. In India, it covered the Sindh, Punjab, and uh, basically Western India and uh, Pakistan. The discovery of this uh, exhibition in the 19th 20th century. That is provide important archaeological data about the ancient culture. So, in the Swelly civilization is also uh, divided in uh, different category. So, in, based on the human advancement and the uh, advanced civilization. So, first division was the pre Harappan. And the time period of this 7000 between the 7000 to 5500 5, BC. The Neolithic in this period important site is Mehargar, which is so evident of the agriculture development, domestication of uh, plants and animals, and production of tools and ceramics. Second phase of this civilization is early Harappan. The time period of the 5500. And then between 2800. So, in this uh, basically trade was the uh, advance in this age, and we, we uh, in this in the Swelly civilization people trade uh, from the Egypt, Mesopotamia, and possibly China. Port warehouse were built near waterway for the community living and a small village. So, and another phase of this civilization uh, is the mature Harappa the, the, the time period of 2800 and 1900 BC in this civilization basically great uh, construction of the great cities and widespread urbanization and uh, other cities like Lothal Dholavira was the emergence of this in this period and basically uh, construction of um, modern uh, construction of development of the urbanization and land continue with the construction of hundred of other cities until there are the cover 1000 of them throughout the land in the every direction so this is the uh, time period of the mature harappan uh, phase 
and next phase the late harappan in this uh, time period 1900 between the 1500 basically this period, uh, time period was the decline uh, decline of the this civilization there were <clears throat> many uh, theories regarding this so uh, uh, one of the theory claimed that the aryan people came in india uh, for the region of the indus valley civilization and some uh, scholars say that natural calamities like uh, flood drought famine was the main cause of the decline of the Indus Valley civilization. And other, another school of thought says that the loss of trade relation, relation with the Egypt and Mesopotamia has also be, uh, was the uh, important cause of the decline of the Indus Valley civilization. So there are debate among the scholar and academician regarding the decline of the civilization. Post Harappa, another phase of uh, this civilization, the, the time period of the uh, 1500 to 6th century BC. So, in this time period, the city were abundant and the people had moved south. The civilization had already fallen by the time of Cyrus II. Basically, in this time, post Harappa period, <coughs> civilization in the early civilization was declined. And uh, 6th century BC was the time period was the uh, second urbanization in Indian history. And there was uh, Janpad, Janpad and Mahajanpad and uh, some republic state. So this is the some important site of the Indus Valley civilization. So this cover the almost uh, West West India and Pakistan and also Afghanistan, some of the Afghanistan area. And society and political system of the Indus Valley civilization, the basically Indus Valley civilization was the divide into three categories, that is administrator, trader and priest was the important pyramid of the Indus Valley civilization and important characteristic of the civilization like plan, town, road, drainage system, organized trade was the important <clears throat> and powerful centralized administration. One of the important characteristic of the Indus Valley civilization. There was decision making authority for the municipal system in Harappan culture. The second and uh, the second theory uh, who says that there was no single ruler, but a number of them representing each of the urban center, including Mohanjodaro, Harappa and other community. Basically, Mohanjodaro, Harappa was the important city of this Indus Valley civilization. And finally, experts have theorized that Indus Valley civilization had no ruler as we understand the concept of a ruler today. With in everyone enjoying equal status. So there are not a single view regarding the <coughs> political system of the, this civilization. Many authors say that different view regarding the political system of this in the Valley civilization. Art of this civilization was the <coughs> uh, many, uh, we can depict many seals, poetry, gold, jewelry. Uh, in the, we are uh, that is found in, in this civilization, terracotta, bronze, and uh, many other uh, monuments. And script, the Harappan believe uh, to have in this script and language. Basically, Harappan script was the symbolic language, a collection of written text uh, table. <coughs> which uh, have been carbon dated in 33, 3300 uh, and 3200 BC and it contained a time shape and plant like marking. Basically, the language of the Harappan civilization was the symbolic and some symbol that is related to the nature and uh, like plant and uh, triangle shape. And religion was the uh, in this civilization, mainly Harappa was with a mother goddess who symbolized the fertility. It and it in contrast to 
Egyptian and Mesopotamia civilization, the Indus Valley civilization seems to have led any temples or places that would give a clear evidences of religious rites or specific deities. Some Indus Valley seals so swastik or symbol also. So the end of this civilization, uh, there were two prominent theory. So one of the theory was the Aryan invention in India. According to this uh, British archaeological Mortimer Wheeler, uh, he was a nomadic and Indo-European uh, tribe. He says that he called the Aryan was the nom uh, nomadic and Indo-European tribe. And suddenly, over in the conquered the Indus Valley civilization, and basically he says that uh, the uh, arrival of Aryans in India was the main cause of the decline of this, this civilization. Next theory was the climate change theory. The scholars suggest that the collapse of Harappan society resulted the, from climate change. Some experts believe that. Drying of the Saraswati River, which began around the 1900 BC, was the main cause of the climate change. While others conclude that the great food stuck in the area, basically famine and other natural climates. So there are there is uh, there are two popular theory: the decline of Indus Valley civilization. First is Aryan invention theory, and second is climate change theory. So next phase, uh, after the decline uh, of the Indus Valley civilization, the next period of the ancient Indian history, that is the Vedic period. So in this period, Aryan was the main uh, in this period. So Aryan were a semi-nomadic people, and meaning of the Arya was uh, meaning of the Arya is noble, and the original homeland of Aryan is also matter of controversy with different expertise in different places. Some of the says that Aryan came from the India and Caspian Sea. And some of the says that Aryan came from the India, Central Asia, in which Max Muller was the important. And another Bal Gangadha Tilak was the uh, says that Aryan uh, came from the Arctic region. So uh, Aryan invention in India and Aryan uh, was the also debatable issue in ancient Indian history among the many scholars. So, <clears throat> and basically, Aryan was the subtle in Indo-Gangetic plan, and they they spoke Sanskrit and Indo-European language. So, uh, Vedic period also divided into two periods because of the vast uh, time period. So, uh, we can uh, divide into two periods. First is early Vedic period. The, this period is also known the Rig Vedic period. The time period of this period is 1500 BC to 1000 BC. And later, uh, next is later Vedic period. Uh, this period, time period is 1000 BC to 600 BC. So let me come to the early Vedic period. So early Vedic period in which initially Aryan lived. Uh, in the land known as a Sapta Sindhu, basically land of the seven river. And th uh, these seven rivers were Sindhu, Vyas, Jhelam, Ravi, Chenab, Satlaj, and Saraswati. This, uh, this uh, seven, basically Aden firstly initially located in around the in se uh, seventh river that is called the Sapta Sindhu land. And political structure of uh, the time period is basically monarchical form of the government with the king known as Rajan and fam patriarchal families. Jana was the largest social unit in Rig Vedic period. Social grouping in which Kula, the uh, most largest family, Gram, Vis, Jana, and tribal assembly were called Sabha and Samiti. These are the some political units. Sabha and Samiti and some of the tribal kingdom like Bharat, Mats, Yadu and Puru. Social structure of this period, women were allowed to take part in uh, political decision and politi uh, political unit like Sabha and Samiti. There were women, poets, 
सचेज अपाला लोपा मुद्रा घोसा कैटल वॉज स्पेशली इन कैटल स्पेशली काऊ बिकम वॉज वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज काऊ वॉज व इकोनॉमिकली प्रसिशियस एनिमल्स एंड देर वॉज सम वॉर हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ द काऊ मोनोगॉमी वॉज द प्रेक्टिसाइड बट पोलोगॉमी वॉज ऑब्जर्व अमंग द रॉयलिटी एंड नोबल फैमिली देर वॉज नो चाइल्ड मैरिज and uh, social distinction existed but were not rigid and hereditary so economic structure of this period there were a cattle rearing people and basically economy based on the agriculture and <coughs> iron and bronze were used they uh, basically river was the used for the transportation cotton and woolen fabric uh, were used initially trade was connected through the barter system basically in the early civilization trade was the barter system there were no uh, such as uh, currency and later the coins called nisq were in use religion in rigu vedic period and early vedic period in this period the basically people uh, uh, worship uh, nature in which uh, earth fire wind rain and plant so uh, let us uh, the indra earth agni varun vayu these are the uh, prominent god of the uh, early vedic period and female god was the usha and aditi Uh, there were no temple and no ideal worship basically in the rigvedic period uh, the nature god was the pre- uh, prevalent and there were no uh, such as temple and uh, ideal worship and later vedic period in this period society was the more complex in compared to the early vedic period and uh, there were in, in different Political, social, and economic st- structure compared to the early Vedic period, and in most important in this period, Aryan moved to the occupy Western and Eastern UP and Bihar. Basically, Indo-Gangetic plan. As Aryan was settled in this period, Indo-Gangetic plan or political structure like in this period, kingdom like Mahajanpad. So initially, Jan Janpad and Mahajanpad were formed. in uh, 6th century bc king was more powerful increased various sacrifice were performed by him to enhance his position what kind of sacrifice like uh, yagy uh, in which rajasuy vajpay asmed these are the some sacrifice uh, that is uh, by the king for the enhance their power and the sabha and samiti was the uh, in this time sabha sam- and samiti uh, uh, they uh, dismiss in this time this and social structure of uh, the later vedic period this libarna system was the uh, prevail in this society and society based on the divide on the varna system the brahmar chatri vaishya and shudra and occup- uh, occupation was hereditary the four division this uh, division and divide into hierarchical order first is brahmin chatri and third is uh, vaishya and shudra so women were not permitted to attend a public assembly like sabha and samiti their position in society lower basically in this period women condition was uh, lower in compared to the early vedic period child marriage become common and sub caste based occupation was, was also emerged and gotra was institutionalized basically in this uh, uh, time society was more complex and there as more hierarchical division and caste system was the prevail in this uh, early vedic period economic structure 
in this period was this agriculture was the chief occupation because of the use of iron and industrial work like metal work and carpentry work also there there was some foreign trade with babylon and religion uh, and worshiping also different from the early vedic period to in this period so in this period net and uh, Prajapati Vishnu was become more important god Indra and Agni lost their significance so and also buddhi emergence of buddhism is also in this period important because of the emergence of buddhism and jainism is the counter of the hinduism so in this in buddhism basically hinduism was the in that time Uh, more complex and in this uh, in this uh, religion the lower uh, strata of society sudra and woman condition was poor and because of this the jainism and buddhism was the emerge and in jainism and buddhism basically based on the equal treatment to all people and in they they were not uh, divide in the uh, hierarchical division so these are the these are this is the social and religious condition of this society literature basically uh, i have already told uh, there were five vedas rigved yajurved and atharved vedic text brahmin upanishad arnayak vedant these are the some important sources of this vedic period so maha, next phase of the ancient indian history mahajanpad so there were 16 mahajanpad basically large political geographical units and 16 mahajanpad were established in 6th century by the incorporating the janpada which were earlier autonomous units the types of uh, mahajanpad uh, the, uh, is basically uh, form in two types so monarchical mon, mahajanpad and republican mahajanpad the in monarchy government the state was ruled by the hereditary king and in mahajanpad mainly kosla and magadh was the important janpad and <coughs> republican state basically the king was elected from the group of rajas who were known for the their ability and he ran the administration with the help on assembly like called sabha in which vajji was the important uh, um, republican state uh, in 6th century bc these are the uh, 16 mahajanpad this is almost uh, cover to entire india uh, except southern india so ka- these are the kasi kosla ang magad vajji mal chedi vat kuru panchal mat and ashtak avanti gandhar kambol these are the 16 mahajanpad political structure of mahajanpad basically monarchy form of government and uh, the founder of jainism and buddhism came from the republican state and each mahajanpad had the capital city and most of them uh, mahajanpad they build fort around the protection of from their kings regular army were maintained by the king and raja and they also collected tax from the people and uh, basically this was known as a bhag or share so this is the uh, and another important uh, significance of the uh, from the vedic period to the 16 mahajanpad this is the mode of production basically changes in agriculture in this period there were two major changes in agriculture growing the use of iron and increased production so in this uh, because of the uh, use of iron there was surplus production so the king was more powerful in the 6th century bc so this is the uh, brief about the mahajanpad period next is maurya empire magad next is the uh, um, uh, magad empire sorry in in magad empire harya dynasty was the first powerful dynasty in magad 
was the uh, Harir dynasty in which first ruler was the Bimbisara and his capital Rajgiri that is uh, also in uh, located in Patna and he uh, started the practice of using matrimonial merit, alliances to strengthen his political position. He had three wives, Kosla Devi, Helna and Khema. <coughs> And another ruler of this empire is Ajat Satru, and he, uh, he his uh, in this time the first Buddhist council at Rajgiri just after the death of Buddha in 483 uh, period. And another uh, uh, another king was in in this period Udayan. This is the last uh, king of the Harek dynasty. He shifted the capital to the uh, from the Rajgri to Patilputra, Patna. And another dynasty of this uh, uh, ancient Indies is that is Sisunang dynasty in which Kala Sok was the important king. And next dynasty was the Nanda dynasty. This was the first non chhatri dynasty. And in the first ruler was Mahapadam Nand. And the last ruler was the Dhan Nand. After the defeat of Dhan Nand, the Mauryan Chandragupta Maurya become of the uh, king of the Mauryan Empire. So Chandragupta Maurya was the first ruler of the Mauryan dynasty, and second was the Bindusara, and third was the Asok. The, for, uh, the founder of Mauryan dynasty, Chandragupta Maurya, <coughs> have got inherently large army from the Nanda which he used the conquer almost whole of the North India, North West and larger part of the peninsular India. Bindusara son Asoka added the culling to the already vast empire, uh, vast empire that addition would be the last. However, at the brutal conquest of the that region led to Asoka to abandon military conquest as he embraced the Buddhism and instituted Dhamma as the state ideology. After the Kaling War, uh, he, Asoka was the, um, uh, adopted the Buddhism as a state ideology. The most important literary source in this uh, uh, time, Megasthenes Indica, and other equally popular sources is Kautil Arthasastra and Buddhist texts uh, Buddhivadan, Asokadan, Mahavadan, Digvadan, these are the important sources to know the uh, history of the Mauryan Empire. And another most important sources of Mauryan periods is inscription of Asoka. These are the different uh, types of some of the, the in which first category was the 14 rock edict that is also called the major rock edict. And Next, two separate rock edicts, Kalinga rock edict and two minor rock edicts, seven pillar edicts or major pillar edicts, minor pillar edict, rock edict from Bharat, two minor pillar inscription, inscription in the Barber Hill close to the Gaya. These are the inscription and uh, also archaeological sources of the modern period. Economy, basically this uh, period economy was the agricultural economy. Two factor is more important, control over the iron and manpower led the foundation of a strong economy during the modern period. And basically two important concern of the Magadha state is uh, first is the expansion of trade and commerce and second establishment of the new towns and markets. And major trade routes to West Asia and Central Asia pass through the Northwest India. And major centers like Rajgir and Magad and Kosambi near Kosambi, which is so nowadays near Prayagraj, were located the main two trade routes that were along the river Ganga and Himalaya hills. So because of the uh, Indo-Gangetic Indo plan, there were major trade routes that is connect to the India to the central, from the India to the Central Asia. So in, in this, the modern empire was the flourish <coughs> trade, uh, commerce and the use of the iron. Patilputra was located in the strategic location through which trade route and river route in all the four directions could be accessed. 
the northern route links city like kapil vastu savasti vesali uh, with kalsi hazara eventually past pesavar so these are the trade uh, route connectivity and what kind of central administration in this period so uh, king firstly the king and central council of minister city administration there are army law and justice and public welfare department this is the some category of the central uh, administration society was the <clears throat> in this period according to the megasthenes he described uh, so a modern society into the seven group uh, basically uh, megasthenes says that indian society is divided into into the seven class he was i think he was the confused the caste system of india because uh, he he says that philosopher cultivator hunter hetman artisan trader overseer and the king these are the some important category of the society and the social and economic process agrarian expansion and urbanization facing center continue under the modern rule and there was a further growth in city trade and money economy so post modern kingdom uh, there there are, there was some post modern kingdom like hunga dynasty kanva dynasty satvahan dynasty indo greek parthian sak dynasty kushan and some south indian kingdom like chol cher pandya these are the some uh, after the decline of modern period and post modern kingdom so next uh, important period of the ancient indian history that is all called gupta period so the gupta gupta period was uh, many historians says that gupta period uh, is the period of classical age and golden age basically this narrative was uh, proposed by the nationalist historians they says that gupta period was the golden period because they used the gold coins there were uh, culturally advanced society was uh, most advanced in that period but another school of thought marxist says that gupta period is not uh, the golden period of uh, the history there were <coughs> social condition was very poor and women condition was also very poor one of the uh, evidence that is related to the sati system is also got from the gupta period the time period of the 510 and this is the uh, got from the eran uh, place of the eran so sati system was also there so so varna system was also there and caste system was more complex the previous age in this uh, in this period untouchable was the another category emerged and the sudra and untouchable condition was very poor and when we says that the uh, use of gold coin the uh, portion of the gold was very less in coins so there were uh, different uh, school uh, scholars says that different uh, thought on in the uh, the golden age of the gupta period so the sources of this period there were plenty sources of uh, this period of the so there were there is also literary work inscription coins and monuments so <clears throat> puran was the most important sources of the gupta period basically this period is the uh, um, also hindu period so they devi chandra gupta mudra rakshak uh, important and kalidas work is also important and chinese traveler fayan uh, accounts was also important source of the gupta period and some of the official records so allahabad stone pillar inscription of samudra gupta this was uh, uh, also uh, important source of this period and mehroli iron pillar inscription of chandragupta second and junagadh rock inscription of skandgupt these are the important source of the um, uh, gupta period and also coins of the important source 
so political history of this period so first ruler of the gupta period is sri gupta and ghatot first so the genealogy account of the gupta sri gupta is maintained maharaj sri gupta and uh, the second ruler of the ghatot cut and there are some confusion about the sri gupta and ghatot cut ruler and next uh, uh, ruler was the chandragupta first this is the first independent king of the gupta uh, dynasty he strengthened his posi position by a matrimonial alliances with the lichvi and he married kumar devi a princess of the lichvi clan and he this added to the power and prestige of the gupta family he assumed the, the title of maharaja maharaja the jiraj great king of king and another important ruler of this dynasty is uh, samudra gupta the allahabad pillar inscription that is also known as the prayag prasasti gave a detailed account of his achievement he followed the policy of war and conquest the this long inscription was composed by his court poet harisena in the uh, in sans and this is in the sanskrit language much of the indian subcontinent was directly or indirectly under his control according to the prayag prasasti the place and and the territories conquered by the samudra gupta can be divided into five group <clears throat> so uh, uh, the, there are five groups in which the uh, political achievement of the samudra gupta first uh, group who include the ganga yamuna doab which were the uh, in which na nine naga ruler annexed their territory in which nine naga ruler was the defeated by the samudragupta second group include ruler of the eastern himalayan state and some frontier states such as princes of nepal assam bengal who surrounded his might it also include part of the punjab and third group include the forest kingdom situated in the vindh region known as the atvik raj and forced their ruler into survive the conquest of this region helped him to move toward the south and another uh, group five include 12 ruler of eastern deccan and south india who were defeated and his power reached as a far and kamchi in south india where the pallava were forced to recognize his Uh, position in it is important to maintain the we sena was the commander of the samudra gupta during his southern campaign in the south he adopted the policy of political conciliation and we instated the defeated king on their throne and these state acknowledged his uh, suzerainty and paid him to tribute the peasant and group 5 include the saka of western india and the kushan ruler of the north west india and this is also uh, cover also afghanistan samudra gupta swept them out from out of the power so in five group uh, claim uh, says that the victory of the uh, samudra gupta uh, samudra gupta so another important ruler of this dynasty is the chandra gupta second so he adopted the title of vikramaditya and he married he also expanded his territory through the marriage alliances he married the kuber naga the naga princess and had a daughter prabhavati and her married prabhavati to the vakata princess rudrasen second and uh, most important source of this uh, uh, time Iron pillar inscription at Meheroli, Delhi indicates that his empire included even North Western India uh, and Bengal. He adopted his court. Uzain was the nine famous scholar known as the Navratna. So Kalidas and uh, Amar Singh Var Varamihir Dhanvantri. घटापरा संकु काहापन वरचू वेताल भट्ट दी जाडा सम नाइन स्कॉलर 
and these are the these were the court of the Vikramaditya second. And another important uh, ruler uh, in this uh, dynasty, Kumargupta, he adopted the uh, title of Sakraditra and Mahendraditya, and he performed the Asume sacrifice. And most importantly, he found uh, he laid the foundation of the Nalanda University. Uh, this is the important international university of the ancient period, which emerged as the institution of international reputation and next skandgupta <coughs> he adopted the also title of the vikramajit and junagar inscription junagar inscription of his region reveal the his governance pranapat repaired the uh, sudarshan lake basically he repaired the sudarshan lake that is also situated in junagar uh, location uh, gujarat so he was the also interested in public welfare work. Economy of the this period was uh, also agriculture based economy. There were some other occupation as well uh, commerce and production of uh, craft. Different social group was engaged in these occupation and different social group was also emerged in the uh, Gupta period. The revenue generated from the agriculture was the main source income for state land grant also one of the important <coughs> feature of this uh, time period irrigation was the considered important locally managed irrigation uh, device like the ghati yantra also called the agrahant war in the vogue and craft production covered a very wide range uh, in this period There was some ordinary domestic use such as uh, made basket, metal tools uh, for the domestic use. Luxury items include jewelry made for gold and silver, precious stone, objects made of fine skin, cotton, cloth. These are the some craft uh, based uh, production. Contemporary sources refer to the Carpenter, textile porter, ivory makers, bricks manufacturers, salt makers, oil millers. These uh, are the some uh, craftsmen and uh, craft craft based uh, occupation. These sources also inform us about the different ca categories of the craftsmen. Society of this period, the position of Brahmin in the social order was already high before the Gupta period. They came to be related to the royal power, the royal and land grant by individual and institution to the Brahmin made them even more powerful. In this time, basically, land grant was given uh, to the Brahmin. The idea of Varna divided social order become the norm. The caste Florifed into numerous sub castes or jatis. Various other groups like untouchable were considered impure. Similarly, uh, in the <coughs> category of untouchable, Chandras, <coughs> Chamarkas, and similar group were <coughs> considered as an outcast. And the position of uh, higher uh, women of the higher Varna was low. The uh, position was the very low in this period. The woman in the family was expected <coughs> to function as an ideal wife and as a mother. Women were even considered to be the same category as a sudra and sati system was the uh, prevail in this uh, time period. And child marriage was also in, in the um, in this uh, prevail in this entire uh, society. <coughs> So this is the all about the Gupta and this is the some brief introduction about the Gupta period and next uh, period was the Pusya Bhuti and rise of the Harsha. After the decline of Buddha, uh, after the decline of Gupta period, there were some uh, transition uh, period uh, uh, like uh, 100 to 200 uh, years. 
<coughs> there were no central centralization of power in india and this uh, time period the uh, post group uh, emerged some numerous family and numerous uh, ruler like mokri uh, of kanyakub and later gupta of magad godho of west bengal matrak of vallabhi these are the four uh, ruler uh, family a uh, ruler uh, dynasty so we can say that dynasty uh, emerged after the uh, decline of gupta uh, period and pushya bhuti of the thaneswar so in which pushya bhuti was the important and prominent dynasty emerged after the decline of gupta period and the defeat uh, some uh, defeat all these uh, family king and some some of the by war and uh, some of the by marriage uh, alliances many of the <coughs> uh, them were originally subordinate of the gupta but with the decline of political authority of gupta they were assumed as a independence so kanauj uh, as a new political center the so firstly uh, first rajgre and after that patilputra now kanauj now the political uh, center was the shift from the patilpur patna to kanauj the kanauj <coughs> is situated in up and uh, basically the fertilized plain of ganga yamuna do of kanauj to the elevated area could be easily fortified <coughs> and kanauj was rooted in a large agrarian expansion <coughs> in the western ganges plain a kanauj was also well connected by route going toward east ganga uh, into Uh, as well as with the those going to the south with this development we see focus from patilput in south bihar to kanauj so decline of patilput why the decline of uh, capital uh, as a patilput as a capital so <coughs> historian like aris sharma are of the opinion that patilput in the gupta post gupta period was on decline due to the decrease of trade and commerce basically aras sharma says that the uh, decline of patilput was the main reason trade and commerce this was the part of the process of feudal feudalism and feudalization of state polity and economy so this period also the uh, time period of the uh, feudalism and uh, since trade decline money in the form of coins had become scarce and the officer soldier and the royal servant had to be given their salary through the assign, assignment of land because i have earlier uh, said that the land grant was the important economic feature of the gupta period uh, so because of this the uh, because of the, this land grant there was uh, feudalism was the emerged and this this system uh, declined the trade and commerce through the international uh, because of the international trade uh, from in, to india so aris sharma has recount, uh, remarked the patilput largely represent the pre feudal order where the emergence of kanyakubs under the harsh advent of the feudal age in north india so according to the rs R. sharma this is also the emergence of the feudal age so the pushya bhuti in the so main source of this period uh, was is the harsh charit and account of hoyn song and some inscription and coins so in 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 this dynasty first ruler was the prabhakar vardhan was the father of harsh vardhan and he his two son was rajyavardhan and harshvardhan and his daughter daughter was rajshri was married to the grahman varma king of the mokri dynasty of kanyakub and most uh, important campaigning of the uh, harshvardhan was the eastern campaign in malwa and the <coughs> godbo king sasank and the malo king dev gupta has created trouble by the killing grahvarma the and the mokri king and brother in law of the harsha they captured kanyakubj 
and he also uh, uh, conquered the western india and the kingdom of vallabhi in saurashtra was the being ruled by the matrak who were vessel of the gupta and uh, the important conflict of the harsvardhan that is also uh, known as the with the pulikeshan second the kingdom of hars and pulikeshan second turns on the border of the river narmada the a whole inscription in pulikeshan says that hars harsa joy melted away through fear when his elephant fall in battle from the account of hun song it appeared that harsa took the initiative but could not achieve any success against the pulikeshan there were two uh, narrative two uh argument there was some says that harsa harsa then defeated the pulikeshan and another according to another uh, uh, according to another <coughs> question they says that uh, harsa was not to defeat the pulikeshan second society was the uh, almost similar and uh, the gupta period and uh, the in this period all uh, and more complex the previous time period varna system was there were varna system and caste system women position was uh, very unsatisfactory sati was uh, another popular ritual religion according to the inscription the early pushyabhuti monarch was surya worship so early pushyabhuti ruler was the uh, worship of the surya, surya sun and rajyavardhan was the buddhist devotee and harshvardhan appear to have been shiva devotee who was also interested in buddhism harshvardhan in an effective military leader and skill he was the skilled administration so <coughs> he uh, he was uh, his political achievement was the important and he died in 600 47 is he is regarded to the last hindu king to dominate at uh, sachin area of north india so <clears throat> this is the all about the pushyabhut uh, dynasty and later the gupta period so <clears throat> so in this topic uh, i have covered so uh, all the uh, important uh, phases of ancient india and history from the stain is uh, stone age to the uh, harshvardhan dynasty hello your voice thank you dr jeshma <clears throat> thank you once again one thing that is important to note here that the uh, dr jeshma is currently working as an assistant professor at sabarmati university and uh, visiting faculty at nirma university uh, i am very thankful to you ma'am for a very important and thought provoking lecture uh, on this topic in this in our validatory validatory session now <clears throat> dr pallavi is going to present uh, a report on uh, on our validated course so over to you ma'am and once again i am thankful to you jasna ma'am for delivering so very informative lecture on this topic so, uh, thank sir, you sir i would yeah. like to uh, also express my gratitude to professor jeba akil ma'am head of the humanities and social science department at integral university lucknow for inviting me to deliver this lecture i also extend my thanks to all the organizer university authority and participant of this session for contributing to its success so thank you so much sir
Sorry for your inconvenience. Uh, the slide is taking some time. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Uh, am I audible, sir? Okay.
गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर पल्लवी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हिस्ट्री डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ह्यूमिनिटीज एंड सोशल साइंसिस इंटीग्रल यूनिवर्सिटी लखनऊ आई एम वेरी मच ऑब्लाइज टू प्रजेंट दाइनल रिपोर्ट ऑफ आवर वैल्यू एडेड कोर्स विच इज एच एच टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एंड दिस कोर्स इज ऑर्गेनाइज बाई डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हिस्ट्री Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. It was uh, uh, the when we started this uh, uh, course, it was inaugurated by <coughs> our HOD ma'am, uh, head of the department, Professor Zeba Ki, ma'am, and uh, further our dean, uh, Professor Shahid Ali Khan, uh, also enlightened uh, us through this ki- uh, their kind words, and. Uh, in this uh, course we had five modules and additionally was uh, it was divided into various uh, sub topics the first module covered the area of prehistory and uh, proto history prehistory is a very relevant topic for civil services examination and in this series professor ishrat alam uh, cs department of history amu aligarh joined us and digitally Uh, and shared her extensive knowledge of uh, the prehistory of the indian subcontinent with our students and attendees uh, then dr pallavi means uh, <laughs> myself uh, covered the remaining topics of the module where i have discussed the indus valley civilizations ontology and here are the links of the uh, indus valley uh, lectures on the indus valley civilizations civilization further uh, we have uh, invited dr prathna singh assistant professor history government pg college mahmudabad sitapur to deliver her lecture uh, on this module she has expertise into the ancient indian history so, so she uh, delivered a lecture on the ancient indian history uh, she, uh, she covered uh, sorry indus valley civilization next uh, is the additionally we also invited dr ishan khan uh, from iec university baddi himachal pradesh and uh, he covered uh, he uh, gave a lecture from the topic of module 3 uh, with his expertise on as he, he has expertise on the mauryan history so uh, he delivered his lecture furthermore <coughs> our very uh, esteemed uh, assistant professor of history dr khaja danish hamid they educated us on the vedic period in the next module and he delivered uh, he delivered uh, seven uh, lectures covering the area of rig vedic and the later vedic period which is dated uh, from uh, circa 200 to 600 bc and here are the links for the uh, for the for the uh, videos next uh, dr uh anshal ali tiger he enlightened about the mauryan history on a very detailed note and he has expertise on the history so he enlightened us with his uh, knowledge uh, and in this series further more uh, sorry further uh, the dr mohammad nazrul bari sir associate professor cs department of history amu aligarh delivered lecture on history of gupta dynasty as he has the an expertise on gupta uh, indian history so he delivered a lecture on the history of gupta empire in this uh, uh, in the further note uh, our esteemed uh, assistant professor uh, miss sadra shehnaz uh, also belong to the uh, humanities and social sciences and uh, he delivered he covered the module 4 and he uh, delivered their lecture on guptas which is uh, about the 4th century uh, c to uh, late 6th century and uh, also he uh, sorry sorry uh, she also covered the vardhanas uh, then the uh, we covered the uh, module 5 in which uh, the south indian history from 3rd century bc to 3rd century ad uh, covered and in this history we also covered the sangam age on a very large note and so here we completed the module 5 but in the addition of the uh, an appendix uh, dr jishan varsi from assistant pr- professor political science humanities and social sciences integral university uh, 
with an special lecture on administration and bureaucracy in ancient india uh, ancient times in india uh, covered by the dr jishan varsi here uh, we uh, also delivered a uh, uh, here we also invited a guest speaker uh, on the on this valedictory session and uh, dr joshna uh, uh, the assistant professor history department of social sciences uh, sabarmati uh, university ahmedabad gujarat and the topic of their uh, today's topic is an ancient indian history and overview so uh, she covered the all over history of ancient india and uh, she uh, she is presented with an ontological uh, lecture on this topic and uh, she is very uh, ex she has uh, she ha has an expertise in ancient indian history and very deliberately uh, covered the uh, topic so now i would like to uh, would like to write a study ma'am to present uh, the further information and significance of the uh significance of this related courses uh, please uh, uh, jodi ma'am dr zeba akil uh, please continue uh, with your lecture good afternoon all the participants on the behalf of department of humanities and social sciences i have been given the responsibility to just give the vote of thanks to all my speakers and special thanks to my team members who made lot of efforts despite of lot of engagement professional engagements then also i am really thankful to first of all to my internal team members who gave lot of hard work and cooperation to sum up this course and the title of the course ancient history from the purview of civil services examination it is the first kind of course which was introduced we started the course and they gave a very detailed lectures which were very insightful for the students and for the people who are preparing for civil services examination which to the best of my knowledge covered all the aspects may i'm really thankful to all the guest speakers who enthusiastically participated and gave their precious time 
in enlightening our students and the participants i am thankful to the university authorities and all the faculty members and special thanks to dr pallavi and dr anshal who they gave life to this course i am really thankful to all the participants who are part of this value added course and i wish in the near future a uh, course again a value added course spartan which would cover medieval history of india and world would be taken up by the department of humanities and social sciences with with this i want to end the vote of the note vote of thanks and i really wish you all best of luck thank you